Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the fourth Sunday of Lent, which we traditionally call as Leitare Sunday, the Sunday of joy. And we rejoice because of God's love for us. His love heals us. His love saves us. And His love gives us life. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love, let us now humbly call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. On us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to your grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priest, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of nations, and he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets. Until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, sat all its palaces of fire and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who had where they became servants of the king of Chaldeans and his son until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. has retrieved its lost Sabbaths. During all the time it lies to waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyprus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, also charged me to build him a house 
in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any parts of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. you. By the gates of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. For there our captors ask of us, the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urge us to be joyous. Sing for us the song of Zion. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgression, he has been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace, this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light 
people prefer darkness to light because for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light. The Gospel of Please be seated. Sisters, as we continue this small catechesis on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we focus today on the theme of being anointed. And what does it mean to be anointed? Ano bang ibig sabihin nung hinirang? Our readings today give us examples of people who were anointed by God. Mga hinirang ng Diyos. In our first reading today from the second book of Chronicles, God chose Cyrus, the king of Persia, to lead his people. And this is an unusual choice by God. Unusual because Cyrus was a Persian. He was not a Jew. But he was chosen by God to the people of Israel were dominated, were conquered by the Babylonians. The Persians conquered the Babylonians and so it was Cyrus who ruled over the people of Israel. He was an unusual choice and he was given an unusual mission. If the Babylonians sent the Israelites to exile and destroyed the temple of Jerusalem, Cyrus was given the task by God to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. Kakaibang pagpili ng Diyos. Isang dayuhan ang siyang mamumuno sa kanyang bayan at itong dayuhan na to hindi niya pagpapatuloy ang pagkasira ng bayan ng Diyos. Bagamat hindi siya naniniwala sa Diyos, magtatayo siya ng templo para sa bayan ng Diyos. Cyrus was chosen by God. Cyrus was anointed by God to lead his people. And in our gospel, we are reminded that because of the love of God for us, because of the desire of God to save us, he has chosen a savior. And that Savior is His own very Son. God so loved the world that He sent His only Son. He did not just send anybody. He did not just send any angel. He sent His only Son. He chose His Son in order to save us. That is why Jesus is called the Christ, the Messiah. The meaning of the word Christ is the Anointed One. Yun po ang ibig sabihin kapag tinatawag natin sa Jesus na Kristo, Messias, ibig sabihin hinirang ng Diyos. Jesus the Christ is the anointed one of God 
chosen and sent by God to save us. And the mission of Jesus is not to condemn. Jesus said in our gospel today, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. Ang mission ni Jesus, hindi kapahamakan, hindi pagkasira, kundi kaligtasan. Jesus came not to punish, not to condemn, not to kill us, but to save us and to give us life. That is the mission of the Anointed One of God. My dear brothers and sisters, what does being anointed mean? It means being chosen by God to do God's mission. Ang hinirang ng Diyos ay yung pinipili ng Diyos para gawin ang misyong ibinibigay sa Kanya ng Diyos. At ano yung misyon na yun ay binibigay sa Kanya ng Diyos? Ang misyon na gawin kung ano man ang kalooban ng Diyos. Ang hinirang ng Diyos ay magpapatuloy ng gawain ng Diyos ng kaligtasan. Ang hinirang ng Diyos ay gagawa ng kabutihan para sa kanyang kapwa. Ang hindi huhusga, hindi magdudulot ng kapahabakan. Ang hinirang ng Diyos magpapagaling. Ang hinirang ng Diyos magbubuklod. Ang hinirang ng Diyos magbibigay pag-asa at buhay. Ang hinirang ng Diyos magiging daan ng kaligtasang ibinibigay ng Diyos. The Anointed One is one chosen by God to do the mission of God. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, is very much connected to oil, langis. Because literally, the word anoint, to anoint, means ang hinirang ay pinapahiran ng langis. That is why in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when God chooses someone to be a priest, a prophet, or a king, that person is anointed with oil. Pinapahiran ng langis bilang tanda na siya ay pinili ng Diyos. Kaya nga po, may mga sakramento tayo na pinapahiran tayo ng langis. In baptism, after the pouring of water, baptized is anointed with chrism, a kind of oil that we use in the church, anointed with chrism on the crown of the head in order to show that this newly baptized is chosen by God for a mission. After the person through the pouring of water is claimed by God to be his child, now this child will be anointed to do the mission of God. Pagkatapos na ang kininka ng Diyos bilang kanyang anak, sasabihin ng Diyos sa iyo, hinihirang kita bilang anak ko na gawin ang aking gawain na gawin ang aking misyon. When we were confirmed in confirmation, we were also anointed with chrism, pinapahiran ng langis sa noo, bilang tanda ng ating misyon na maging na ipahayag si Jesus. When a man is ordained a priest, when we were ordained, 
our hands were anointed with oil. Yung kamay namin pinapahiran ng langis to symbolize that our hands will be used by God to bless His people and to offer the sacrifice for God. Hinirang upang gawin ang gawain ng Diyos. When a priest is ordained a bishop, his head is anointed with oil. Yung ulo binubuhusan ng langis bilang tanda na siya ay pinili ng Diyos sa isang misyon mamuno maging pastol ng bayan ng Diyos. And so God's choice is always an anointing and anointing is externally shown by the smearing, the pouring of oil. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our reflection on the sacrament of baptism on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we focus on that, the use of oil in baptism as a sign of our being anointed by God. Because all of us were anointed with chrism when we were baptized, it means that each of us is chosen by God. Each of us is anointed by God. Hindi ka lamang nagpresenta ng sarili sa Diyos para sabihin mong, Lord, ang kinin mo na akong anak mo. Lord, piliin mo na ako. I-anoint mo ako. Hindi ka nagpresenta ng sarili. Pinili ka ng Diyos. Hinirang ka ng Diyos. And, God, and that gives us much more honor. Hindi lang ako nag-volunteer. Pinili ako. Hinirang ako ng Diyos. And St. Paul in our second reading today reminds us of this same truth. He said, We are God's handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. Tayo'y hinirang ng Diyos, nilikha ng Diyos para sa mabubuting gawain. That is our mission. To do God's works and God's works. My dear brothers and sisters, by them we are all chosen by God. We are all anointed by God. And we are chosen and anointed for a mission. And what is our mission? To do the works of God. My dear brothers and sisters, have you been doing your mission? Ginagawa ba natin ang ating mission? Ginagawa ba natin ang gusto ng Panginoon para... Maybe you will ask me, eh, Father, How do I know if I am doing God's mission? Very simple. If is good, if what you are doing then that is God's work. Kung ang ginagawa natin ay kabutihan, pagmamahal, gawa natin ay mabuti, matapahal, yan ay gawain ng Diyos. But so division, kapag ang ginagawa natin ay pagkakahati-hati, if we inflict pain 
kung nananakit tayo, if we destroy one another, kung sinisira natin ang bawat isa, if we condemn and punish and kill each other, that is definitely not God's mission. You might be doing the mission of someone else, even by the enemy of God, but that will never be the mission of God. Ating paninira o yung ating pagdudulot ng pagkakawatak-watak ay dahil ginagawa natin ito sa ngalan ng Diyos. Kahit kailan, hindi maninira, hindi magdudulot ng pagkakawatak-watak at pagkasira ang Diyos. For God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but to save it. Ililigtas tayo ng Diyos. Yan ang gawain ng Diyos. Ano man ang mabuti para sa atin, yan ang misyon natin dahil yan ang misyon ng Diyos. We are all anointed and chosen by God. But in a special way, my dear brothers and sisters, those who are in positions of authority, whether in the government, in society, in business, and in the church, they are anointed. They are chosen for a specific mission. And we pray that those people anointed to lead the people of God, to lead the citizens, will do also the mission of God. Sana lahat ng namumuno ang ginagawa ay yung misyon ng Panginoon at hindi yung misyon ng kalaban ng Panginoon. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of this pandemic and more than one year before the elections here in the Philippines, I'm sure all of us have been hearing about people who are already hinting their desire to be chosen by the people in the next elections. Kahit na pandemic, kahit na lumataas, tumataas ang number of cases, parang nararamdaman na natin yung eleksyon dahil marami nang nagpaparamdam na gusto nilang maluklok, gusto nilang mahirang, gusto nilang mapili ng bayan. Kung nagpaparamdam na sila, my dear brothers and sisters, let us start doing our task. Let us are really anointed by God to lead us. Ngayon pa lang, ang mamumuno ayon sa kalooban at sa misyon ng Panginoon. Let us ask, will this person do good and not evil? Will this person do for his family or his friends? Will this person bring about unity and not division? Magiging sanhi ba siya ng pagkakaisa, hindi ng pagkakawatak-watak? Will this person heal us and not add to our wounds and to our pains? Will this person give us life and not kill? Will this and not corrupt? My dear brothers and sisters, if they desire to be chosen, the truth is, we have the power to Kaya nga, ang simbahan ay nakikiusap na maging active participants tayo sa prosesan na pwede nang bumo 
magparegister po kayo. Maging bahagi tayo nito sapagkat mahalaga na makita natin ang kapangyarihan natin para pumili at humirang. Para piliin at hinirang ng Diyos. That is part of our responsibility as anointed by God. My dear brothers and sisters, the fourth Sunday of Lent is traditionally called Leitare Sunday. And Leitare is a Latin word which means joy. And there is reason for joy today because Jesus himself tells us, God so loved the world. Iniibig ng Diyos ang sanlibutan. Iniibig ng Diyos tayong lahat. And because God loves us, He anoints people to save us. Because God loves us, we are all anointed by God. You are anointed by God. You are chosen by God for a mission to do good for others, for the society, and for the world. My dear brothers and sisters, let us live by our anointing. Let us live according to our mission. And let us do God's mission very well. Please all stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. When we were dead in our sins, God brought us to life in His Son, lifted up on the cross for us. Through that crucified Redeemer, let us draw near to our loving Father, and for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church on her pilgrimage in the world, especially the suffering Church of Silence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mercy and justice among peoples of different <clears throat> creeds and cultures, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who show that they prefer darkness to light by their evil deeds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are putting off making the confessions because of fear, laziness, and pride. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed from this life into the mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. We shall now bless the oil that we will give you at the end of the Mass. Lord God Almighty, 
before whom the hosts of angels stand in awe, and whose heavenly service we acknowledge, may it please you to regard favorably and to bless and hallow this creature, this oil, which by your power has been pressed from the juice of olives, through anointing with perfumed chrism, those who are baptized and confirmed, and presbyters and bishops who are ordained, experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. You have ordained it for anointing the sick, so that when they are made well, they may give thanks to you, the living and true God. Grant, we pray, that those who will use this oil, which we are blessing in your name, may grow in holiness and delivered from all suffering and all infirmity and all wiles of the enemy. May it be a means of averting any kind of adversity from human beings made in your image and redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, so that they may never again suffer the sting of the ancient serpent. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through Him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May your voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink. Out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to save my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish to thank all of you for joining us in our Mass this morning. We thank you for uh, following our safety protocols, our health protocols, so that all of us will be safe as we celebrate this Eucharist. We also thank those who are joining the live streaming of this Mass. At uh, pagkatapos po ng Misa sa inyong paglabas, ay tatanggap kayo ng langis, a blessed oil. This is not chrism, which we use at baptism, confirmation, and ordination. This is not the oil of the sick, which the priest uses uh, for to anoint a sick person. No. This blessed oil is a sign of our devotion, of our call to holiness, at sana langis na ito magpaalala sa ating pagiging anointed one ng Panginoon. Uh, magandang paggamit ng langis na ito para paalalahanan tayo 
na gumawa ng kabutihan palagi no? kapag may tukso, no? uh, gamitin natin yung langis. No? Kapag may masakit na bahagi sa katawan, gamitin natin ang langis ng may panalangin. Ito yung magpapaalala sa atin ng presensya ng Diyos na siyang humihirang sa atin. We also wish to invite you to join the Mass of Pope Francis this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Pope Francis will celebrate a Mass with the Filipino community in Rome to celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Sa linggo pong ito ay pagdiriwag natin yung pagdating ng uh, uh, mga unang uh, uh, nagdala ng Kristyanismo sa ating bansa. No? On March 17 this year, uh, on Wednesday, we will celebrate the arrival no, of uh, Magellan and uh, uh, the priest accompanying him to bring Christianity in our land. So, mayroon pong mga celebrations. Makikisa tayo sa celebration sa Homonhon Island in Samar kung saan una silang dumating sa darating na Miyerkules. So, let us be part of these celebrations later at 5 o'clock by Pope Francis. No, you may watch it in our Facebook page and on Wednesday, the celebrations at Homonhon Island no, for the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines. Naway pagpalain po ng Panginoon itong lingong ito. Ingatan tayong palagi ng Panginoon at nawa ay maisabuhay natin ng ating pagiging hinirang ng Diyos. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Your mission begins. Thanks be to God. Oh,